Hey everyone, and welcome back to the X Ring. First thing I want you to do is hit that subscribe button down there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Guys, you know I'm a gun channel and YouTube being unfriendly with gun based videos. So, what we're going to do is some knife reviews. You guys know that I've been doing a lot of reviews of the Microtech knives, but it's just my favorite. I think it is the most durable, one of the best knives ever made. And I mean, ever made by any company for a good hard use work knife. Now this is gonna be a Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is the Tonto version. It does have the liner lock, I want you guys to see this. And the way this works is basically when it gets to that lock position, that bar actually goes in behind on a stop and that's what locks it out. Now, we're going to put this thing through the test today. This is not going to be nice to this knife, and I hate to do it because, guys, this is brand spanking new. Uh, big thanks to Jason McCoy, Corey Campbell, all the guys and gals at Microtech Knives for providing these for the testing. Yes, I do have to give them back at the end of the test, and they don't look anything like this. So this is the SOCOM Elite TE. Uh, it is the tactical standard. The SKU number is a 161-1T. If you're ever looking at ordering one of these now guys for a quick comparison you guys that watch my channel or have been following my channel you guys know that i've been carrying one of these for 19 years going on almost 20 years uh, this is an original life way before i even knew any of the folks at microtech uh, they are the same size the only thing they've really changed on it is they've changed the patterning of the material that they used on the inside they no longer make this any longer this is also an auto version and it's also partial serrated this is not going to be a comparison with this knife but i'm just showing you what a knife will look like after about 19 years of hard use and what I mean by hard use knife, I don't consider this as a gentleman's knife. It, it has a little bit of weight to it. What I do is I'm going to be realistic about the testing, okay? I'm going to do things like try to pry something or pry into a 2x4. Now, keep in mind, a knife is not a pry tool, but a lot of times we use it for that. I can't tell you how many times I've fired a round or something and it lodged into a tree and I wanted to dig that bullet out and here I am digging or prying into that tree. Also, let's talk about blade steels. Guys, you're going to sacrifice something. So you have your super steels. Guys, this uses the 204P CTS, the carpenter steel. 204 is very similar to M390. There's a lot of guys that say, oh, I like M390 better. Guys, M390 and 204P are almost identical in all properties. But when you're talking about knives and blade steel, what you're going to get what you pay for, okay? This is not a US aid or anything like that. Those might be easier to sharpen, but they won't hold edge long, okay? They're, they're much easier to sharpen. This will take a little while to sharpen, but will hold the edge a lot longer. You also have hardness. You also have durability. All of these things play in, and you give and take a little bit. I do have a knife very similar to this one. Um, this is a... SOG or a SOG, okay? Now, this one's called the Trident Tonto. This is not going to be a comparison between these two knives, but I'm going to run something that has AUS-8. It's an $80 knife as opposed to a $270 knife, but I just want to put it through the paces just so you guys can see the differences. Maybe this one will come out on top. I don't know. I'm not going to favor any one particular knife. I'm going to put them through the same tests, but it is not a versus versus, okay? There are other knives to compare it to, but I had one that was similar in almost every way, shape, and form, except in price, blade steel, things like that. Okay, so Microtech SOCOM Elite. I just pulled this out of the house, so it hasn't had a chance to get too damp yet. This is from the factory. I have not touched it. And we have no issues just slicing. And Microtech's always known for sharp knives. These Every knife that they make is hand sharpened by an individual, not a machine. But they are literally going in there with belts. And they test all of these before they ever leave. And you can bet you that they're going to have a scalpel sharp edge on them when they leave the factory. Okay, SOG from the factory. One of the things I can tell you is when you look at it, you can tell it just has straight grinds on it. This might be a machine sharpened. Uh, very doubtful it was done by hand. Yeah, I can kind of roll it and tear it, but yeah, that's not happening. So, okay, that's okay. It's still a sharp edge. This will still cut you. 
it's just not that razor sharp. So I'm going to cut so some that. webbing. Now, here's webbing that you would find off of uh, like a cinch strap or anything like that. That This, this is single flat webbing. This is not what we're going to cut. What we're going to cut, and I just brought it for comparison, is tubular webbing. Okay, this is for rock climbing. This has about a 5,000 pound strength to it. Um, you're not going to break this too easily. Um, it is tubular, meaning that it is a tube, okay? It's not just a flat piece. So if you were to cut this and open it up, you'll actually see, and I will use, oh, just trying to cut this with the AUS-8 SOG. Didn't do too well, but what I'm trying to do is, is show you how wide that piece actually is, okay? So the first test, what we're going to do is I'm going to hold it here at about one inch, I'm going to hold it right here on the edge, and I'm not going to pull it towards myself, and we'll see how much pressure this takes. Okay, so that actually took quite a bit of force using the SOG. We already know it's not quite as sharp just because we tested it. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can get it one pull. All right, so there we go. You guys have seen that. I was using a lot of force to be able to cut that. Let's try it with the Microtech SOCOM Elite. All right, guys, so I picked up the SOCOM Elite. I folded it over just like I did on the other one. I'm gonna hold it right here. I'm just gonna pull it easy. Almost all the way through. That was all the way through. So right off the bat, I gotta give it the sharpness and using a good quality blade steel, you're gonna see that. Let's try it again. We'll do it the same way that we did the other one. And be careful because it cuts so easily, it's not a problem. You see that? Now, let's try, just to be fair, because we tried to cut that sheath a minute ago when I was showing you guys like this. Let's just insert the point into here. Oh, <laughs> I barely had to touch it. I think I, could, I think I could just unzip it, basically, just like that. No force or pressure necessary. Let's get a little more extreme. Let's start cutting some... Uh, if you guys grow up on a farm, you'll 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 know what this next stuff is. Uh, whenever I'm carrying a knife and I need to cut something, I need to cut it. I'm not really worried about what it is. I just know I need to cut it. Uh, we're going to try to do some of this rope right here, but this isn't regular rope. This is actually meant to conduct electricity. Um, and so if we look at it right here, you guys are going to see this stainless wire that's inside of here. And it's braided inside of this rope. So we're going to be cutting nylon. We'll be cutting the sheath because it does have a cotton, like a cotton core there. And we want to see how long it takes to cut it with the Microtech. And we'll compare it to, let's say, the SOG. But either way, this is not an easy test because I'm cutting metal. I'll be cutting metal wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the trailer here. That way I can get some tension on it. I'm just going to pull it across. All right. <laughs> Tying it brought blood because that wire inside of here, like I said, if it gets a little bit frayed, it will actually poke you in the finger. But anyway, here we go. All right. So I've got it tied to this trailer. Let me make sure I'm not grabbing any wire. Uh, we can see we've got a good solid place here. We're going to try the SOG first, and we'll see. One, two. So I got it in two cuts using pretty good strength. Let me do the exact same thing with the Microtech. All right, Microtech SOCOM Elite. Ready? One, two, three. Took three cuts with that. And like I said, I'm going to be fair and transparent with all of these tests. Man, that one hurt. Um, the only thing that I could say might have helped that is because the edge is not as sharp. And when it hits that stainless steel, I don't believe it's grabbing it to cut it. But either way, this one actually won in cutting that metal. So you guys are seeing some differences here already. Let's go ahead and do some, uh, let's do some prying or digging into a two by four and see what happens. All right, guys, so remember, a knife is not designed to be as a pry tool, but there will be times where you'll probably use it to pry against something. This is where your higher quality steels can chip or break because they are harder, they're more durable, but because of that brittleness, uh, to be able to hold that edge, sometimes the tips will snap. So I don't know what's going to happen here. This is a treated 2 by 4 pressure treated. It has been stained, and I've got it on a vise here on the back of the... Polaris, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dig into it until I can just keep digging, and we'll see what happens. So uh, just keep digging until I can't dig anymore. So this is the SOG. First thing I'm going to do on the test is I'm going to jam it in here. 
good force, and I'm going to pry straight down. Okay? Let me get you a little closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. But that's exactly what I'm going to do, is I'm going to just keep digging, prying. Okay, this right here is where something might break. I do have safety glasses on, and I do have cut proof gloves. These are Kevlar on the inside. Okay, that's it, done. Now guys, we just started this test a few minutes ago. This is the exact order that we've been going in, but you see what happened to the AUS-8. The same thing could happen to the Microtech, because I told you, you're not supposed to dig, but I really did not get far with this. So I'm interested to see what this Microtech does. If it does the same thing, this is gonna be a short, quick test. Never know. So I'm gonna use the same block of wood. I'm just gonna flip it around just like this. All right. Microtech SOCOM Elite, Tonto, the same one we started with. Same test, here we go. Oh, I do have a broken tip. You guys see that? So prying is not something you should do with these knives, but let's just keep doing it, see what happens. I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see how much this is going in. Like I said, it just broke the tip of it. Still a usable functioning knife though. You guys can see how deep I'm getting in there on the camera. Yeah, it's all the way through now. So you guys can see that I'm actually through the, you know what? Uh -huh. There we go. So we do have a broken tip. However, this can be reshaped, okay? It's not like it broke in here where we have a completely useless, unusable knife. Now, I did not have it in that deep. You guys saw that test, and I wouldn't be worried about it too much because this knife that I've been carrying for 19 years, you'll actually notice that the blade's a little shorter because it was reworked by Microtech about 10 years ago because I also broke the tip of it like this a long time ago, but they can still reshape it. A little harder with a Tonto point or a clip point or a drop point was a little easier but I still have a functioning knife. So we still have a test going on. Hate it for SOG, hate it for that knife, but that's what you're paying for. And you might say, well, that was only $70. By the time you buy three of those, you're into one of these. This might look ugly, but I guarantee you that's still a functioning knife. Guys, I just wanted you to see how deep that was and prying in, it wasn't real wide on that. And it went all the way through and down. All right, guys, so I really hate that that SOG broke because now I really don't have anything to evaluate it or, evaluate it or compare it against. But we'll just take another direction with it. So I've got some uh, heavy, heavy-duty nylon rope here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it in the vise, and then we're going to try to cut it. This is going to be very difficult to cut. This is not easy for a, a knife to cut. I know that from using this. I've got spools and spools of the stuff that I use around here. So we're going to take the SOCOM Elite, and we are, and you can see it's got the broken tip. Nothing's changed. By the way, this is serial number 4523, so you guys can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this, and I'm going to start cutting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so not bad. 15, 16 sweeps with it, but what I can do 
you guys see that that's a plain edge knife for 19 years i've carried that bad boy right there and it's got a serrated blade and i know a lot of people hate it because they're like man i don't like a serrated blade because it's hard to sharpen you don't sharpen the serrated part okay if you do send it in for service then what they'll do is they'll touch up the edge on a wheel but that's it but this is a 19 year old knife now i'm not going to subject it to the torture test because i'm kind of at one with this but i do want to show you something so working where you're always having to cut heavy duty stuff i'm just going to use the other end so that it's fair now this is my daily carry but with that serrated edge you guys ready one that's why i like a serrated edge okay this is not a video about is serrated better than plain edge I don't care about looks, I care about functionality, and I never have to sharpen this part. Yes, I do get that touched up to get it sharpened, but this is 19 years old. If this were in a serrated version, it would have done the same thing. I'm just telling you my partiality towards those. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna test that liner lock. I wanna go ahead and pound it up against some wood, make sure it doesn't close on us, stay tuned. All right guys, so first thing with that th liner lock, and you guys can see the thumb screw there, and even with gloves on, I have no problem flicking that open but we're in the lock position. It's gonna lock whenever you open it, basically. So basically, I'm gonna hit this on this. And you guys can see we're still good there. We hit it a couple times with the knife or the, the hammer. So there's physically no way for this knife to close on me because of that liner lock now the more i hit it the more it's jamming in that closed position so let's see if i can take my thumb and just slide this over oh look at that easy 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 i'll let you guys see this and slow-mo just like that and it's locked in place you know what we still have a piece of that uh that sog knife let's see if it holds up Okay, guys, this is what's left of it. Well, that's not going to do much because I can't get much leverage on it. Oh, look at that. So had I been trying to do something, now I didn't do anything funky. You guys saw that. That could have potentially closed on me, okay? So you guys see how this lock mechanism works. It's still spring-assisted. see if this thing still works. I'm going to cut myself. Yep, so it still works. Let's try that again. And I was not tapping that, that that hard on it, okay? So here we go. Yeah, that actually gave way. You see that, guys? That's the difference, because if I'm pushing or digging on something, I can cut my finger pretty deeply on something that doesn't have a good lock. Now, this is, uh, I'm not gonna call it that, but this is similar to another major manufacturer's lock um, where it works off of an axis, basically, to open and close. Um, not a big fan of these. So $70 trip to the ER. Yeah, you're probably about $200 now, maybe 300. But uh, that's why I'm doing some of these tests is to show you you're getting what you pay for. Let's do some more tests. All right, guys. So with a couple of the other tests, I had some people say, why'd you run over it with a truck? Why'd you run over it with a mower? Um, there's times pocket knives come out of your pocket. They fall on the ground. You don't realize it. And if you're around heavy equipment or things like that, things happen. They get run over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tractor. We'll take a Kubota, and we'll just pretend we dropped it out of my pocket, and then we're going to run over it a few times, maybe get it in the mud, and we'll check it. So right now I want you to look at the knife. It is pristine other than a broken tip. Let's look at the center here, how everything's centered up. There's nothing off on it. Just like that. And what we'll do is we'll take that Kubota and we'll run over it a couple times. I've actually lost my knife a few times like that carrying something uh, like lumber or sheet metal or anything like that. If you have a pocket clip and it is here and you're carrying it, sometimes when you go to lift it, you'll lift that knife straight out. I'm not worried about my knife because it's done it a million times, but just be cognizant of that. That's uh, something you got to watch out for or you lose your favorite knife. All right, guys, so we got a Kubota L-Series tractor here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place it right here on the ground. It's kind of like hard clay. And there's that same knife, that serial number 4523. And we're gonna say we dropped it out of our pocket and I'm gonna put it right here. 
Now, just for reference, this with the loader and everything else is about 3,300 pounds or so. I'll back over it, I'll flip it over it, and then drive over it again. We'll dust it off, we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll pick it up in a loader and we'll scoop it and see if we can find it again. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Just figured I'd get a little crazy with the bucket and the teeth. Looks good to me. Pocket clip still in good shape. Oh yeah. Still got a good functioning knife. I'm not even gonna knock all the extra dirt off. It's the nice thing about a manual. We're not having any rubbing. Everything's still straight. Looks good. Let's keep testing it. All right, guys, so I'm out in the woods and uh, found an old barrel here. Even though I've got a broken tip, I never checked to see what was in this barrel. Oh, man, that's tough. Not having a tip on here. That's really tough. You guys can see that, but uh, we're still good. Maybe I can find some glass or something out here and maybe we can uh, test this tungsten glass break. All right, guys, so I'm out here in the woods and I found an old window frame. Now, this has got some thick, thick plate glass in it. You guys can see that. This isn't your normal uh, thin plate glass. So this has a tungsten glass break on the end. I do always recommend wear, uh, wearing some type of glasses and make sure that when your hand goes through, it doesn't get your wrist down at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually turn my head and I'm just gonna pop this just like this in the center with this tungsten glass break. You guys ready? Here we go. Nothing, pretty easily. You guys can see how that did that. I really didn't have to push that hard. I just don't want my hand going through. Yeah, that actually chipped a big section off just like that. So yeah, this would work very, very well for automobile glass because that is thick, thick, old school plate glass. Let me see if I can get a piece of this. Just for reference, you can see how thick that is, okay? Like I said, this is a steel frame uh, that happened to find out in the woods. Tungsten glass break, definitely effective. All right, guys, so we have this small tree here. Let's say we need to make some shelter or something. Now, this is uh, two and a half inches, almost three inches in diameter. Let's see if we can baton it down. I'll just use a two by four on the back of the blade and it still has the broken tip. So you guys can see right there and we'll see if we can chop this down. So here we go, SOCOM Elite. I'm gonna move the camera a little closer so you guys can get a, uh, a close up of this and how we're doing this. Might get washed out, hopefully not. Timber. There she goes. All right, guys. So you can see all the way through and through. Knife still in good shape. No chipped edges. So, yeah. Good, solid pocket knife. I don't know how you can beat a so commonly. Nothing elite. like a really good knife in your pocket. Good tool. And they're solid, guys. I ought to try to throw it into a tree and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so you never want to throw your knife, right? Don't throw your weapon and get rid of it. Uh, but if you ever do practice throwing any knives or anything like that to SOCOM Elite, eight to 10 feet, just a slight flick holding it towards the back.
All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that review of the Microtech SOCOM Elite TE. It fared well. At the end of the day, everything still looks nice, other than the broken tip. Does have some dirt on it. Have not washed it off. Now, in full disclosure, I don't carry a manual opener. I know some of you guys don't have that option in some of the states you're living in. But after all the testing today, there's something that I noticed, and that is the detent is a whole lot easier to open. It will still stay in place, but I can take it and just move it really quickly like that. You see how it popped open? Uh, you guys might say that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a good thing. I also have a little bit of play left and right between the chassis and the blade. You guys see that? Just a little bit. And I know what's happened. The lock bar here on that the plate is a little loose on it, so it's not getting a full engagement. But other than that, still full functioning knife. Other than that detent, that detent bugs me a little bit because I don't like a knife to be able to open. On the autos, like the one that I carry, even if your spring's broke on the inside, you can still press the button and manually open it, but it's not gonna open on its own. On this, I don't like to be able to just flick one down like that and have it open. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that review. Tried to make it as fair and as comprehensive as possible. Make it a real world test. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'm not just saying it. Hit that subscribe button. Need to get more viewers, more subscribers. You guys have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.